How goes it everyone? Corey James here and today I want to talk about the Watchers. More specifically, who they were and were they real? Because here's the thing. I understand the concept of myths and legends, but our ancient ancestors didn't. What they wrote down and depicted in their most sacred of temples to them was 100% true. So I figured, let's do that. Take a literal approach rather than a mythical one. Could we uncover the answers? Well, that's what we intend to find out. So let's get to it. Now, before we jump into the mystery, let's make sure we understand it first and do a quick 20 second breakdown. First mentioned in the book of Daniel, chapter 4 of the Old Testament, as the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar is describing a dream, he states that a watcher and a holy one came down from heaven, later explaining, this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones. Now, from this, scholars and theologians speculate that the watchers are angels. And since no further mention or description can be found within the Bible, as they say, that's that. But here's the problem with that. No, it isn't. Why? Well, because it doesn't make any sense. And it fails to address the two most obvious questions. First, why is this the one and only time the term watcher is used rather than angel? And second, why does he say and? Think about it. According to biblical scholars and accepted doctrine, we have God and the messengers of God. So. Who's this other being? Because Nebuchadnezzar clearly states that a watcher and a holy one came to him. Now I'm no grammar expert, but I am fairly positive that when you use the word and, that denotes plural or in addition to, i.e. two different beings came down from heaven. But Corey, what if you're just reading this wrong? What if Nebuchadnezzar is simply saying this being is a watcher and a holy one? Great question. To which I would answer, again, that just doesn't make any sense. Because A, there would be no need for him to specify that this watcher was holy because any being that comes down from heaven, by definition, would be holy. And B, they're two completely different things because angel translates to messenger or messenger of God, which means they travel from one place to another and then back again. A watcher, by definition, would just watch. How does one have anything to do with the other? It doesn't. So you have to assume the obvious. Two different beings came down from heaven, but who's who? Well, angels are divine, holy beings delivering the word of God, and this holy one seems to be delivering a message. So, I'd say it's a fairly logical assumption to presume the holy one is an angel. Which brings us full circle to the question, who was the watcher? Let's go back to the beginning of the Bible and take a look at the first four verses from chapter 6 in the book of Genesis. Now, for me, this is hands down, without a doubt, the most intriguing and mind-blowing four verses in the Bible because it clearly states that the sons of God went into the daughters of humans who bore children to them. Now, why is this important? Because I think these sons of God are the watchers. Let me explain. As Nebuchadnezzar describes the two beings coming down from heaven, one thing seems very apparent. Only one of them is holy. So it appears to me that the watcher is basically the assistant, second in command, someone who has the skills and the ability to be in charge. They just need a little bit more experience. Kind of like a sous chef when you think about it, which I know sounds ridiculous within the context, but hear me out on this one. Nebuchadnezzar clearly states, two beings came down from heaven. However, he only specifies one as being holy or angelic or in charge, which is why it is the watcher who decrees what the holy one demands. Again, just like a sous chef. Everyone knows you're not the actual chef, yet they all listen to you as if you were because you report directly to them and you are the one who watches the day-to-day -day work that takes place, which highlights another characteristic of the sous chef. They feel like they should be in charge, which kind of sounds like the Olympians in ancient Greek mythology when they rose up to challenge and defeat the much older and wiser titans, in turn becoming the gods who decreed the fates of man. And just like the watchers, these gods came down from Mount Olympus to bang the human women, that of which resulted in demigods. And why is this an important thing to highlight? Well, because it mirrors exactly what the Bible just said. 
ancient tales of divine beings coming down from heaven bringing with them the secrets and technology of the universe as well as a lust for mortal women can be found in literally every single culture that has ever existed. So you have to ask yourself, is it all a coincidence or could there be more to the story? Well, there actually is and at one point it was found in the same Bible. They just took it out. The Book of Enoch tells a different, much more detailed story as to why God set the flood and who Noah, the great-grandson of Enoch, really was. And here's the thing, this story has an uncanny connection to another ancient story that actually comes from our first ancient civilization. But it's not the one you think. And if that's something you would like to hear more about, let's go for a modest 50 likes on this video and you got it. All of that being said, despite the fantastic nature of this theory and what it may implicate, the very real reality is that we seem to have some uncanny similarities and a lot of overlooked details that when you put it all together seems to tell a different story than the one we know. But hey, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. What do you think? How's it going everybody? Corey James here. Just wanted to say thank you for checking out the video. I very much hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, do the little guy a favor. Hit the buttons, the like, the subscribe. If you're feeling a little frisky, hit that notification bell. Leave me some comments, suggestions on future videos. Do it all. Once again, thank you and I'll see you on the next one.